you so much for having me. It's awesome to be here. I'm very grateful. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we start off, um, just share a little bit about your business. Not how you got there quite yet, just but Tulane Chiropractic. Okay. Um, I graduated from Palmer uh, College of Chiropractic in 2015, and five weeks later I opened my doors and started seeing patients. That's not very common considering I did not know until like the day after graduation I was opening my doors that soon. Um, I had to get one of my uh, last boards out of the way. Uh, so I am the only woman chiropractor in the East Village. I've been there for three years and I practice uh, Gonstead methodology for in chiropractic terms. And um, I'm a cash practice, I have been since I opened up, so that means I don't accept insurance, but I do help and guide patients on how they might be able to get their returns or submit to their own insurance. Um, I have a strict scheduling scale of how, I, uh, uh, how, I, how my fees are organized. And uh, yeah, I keep everything pretty minimal. I'm, I'm also a one lady band with many uh, hats that I wear. I, not only am I the doctor, I'm the business owner, so I talk to many banks, and I'm so thankful for Two Rivers because they were so great to me. Uh, so because I only had five weeks, I went out and saw it. I think I talked to 10 different banks, and I landed with Two Rivers because they were super helpful. They were supportive of women, supportive of women in business, and I had only heard good things before. And hey, so, a little marketing on your behalf. Yeah. <laughs> ding, ding. Um, so I thought I was going to be able to go out and talk to all my whole community and go walk around the East Village and enjoy myself. And uh, yeah, I didn't get to. Um, so I'm still working on those processes. And um, Lane's been there for how long now? Three years three on years. the 30th. So I've been an established 30th of this month? Yes, so this is my three year great birthday. anniversary. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so the world of chiropractic services was not even on your radar. You went to Iowa State. Mm -hmm. You graduated in? 2008. And mm -hmm. in what field? Fine art, women's studies, and psychology. So, I mean, <laughs> as we all know what happened in 2008 with the, um, you know, the dip, uh, I was just certain that people were going to knock down my door trying to hire me. That was not the case. <laughs> and um, people were like, oh, so you went in art, so you kind of like went away from art. No, chiropractic is very artful. Oh, psychology, so you're not really. I was like, no, there's a lot of psychology with talking to people. And um, the women's studies, mm, I, think, I think I'm about 70-30 with, with patients. So 70% women, 30% men. And I think so I'm at... You still get to dabble in everything that you... Oh, absolutely. And I think I'm at 93% of my patients are, have never seen a chiropractor before. I'm their oh. first chiropractor. That's wonderful. That's very awesome. Well, how did you even find your way here? <laughs> you to, went back home after school, which is not in Iowa. It, well, it is in Iowa. It's a very small town in southwest Iowa. It's called Malvern. Um, it's a very lovely, beautiful, quaint town with, you know, white picket fences and old plantation homes. Um, it was not for me. It's for some people, and that's great, and I love that. But it wasn't where I wanted to end up, and I've always known that. And uh, so I had some friends in Des Moines, and I worked in Omaha. So as you can see, I, I, I had little itchy feet is what we call it whenever you want to travel a little bit. And um, so I worked in Omaha. I decided to call around after I graduated from Iowa State, and I just wanted a job where I worked with nice people. Um, having those degrees, I was like, well, you're going to have to pay loans back in six months, so you buy, might as well like what you do. So I called a chiropractic practice because they were looking for a receptionist, and the woman on the phone was so very nice, so very patient with me. Um, she said, no, just come on in and apply, you know, they want to take a look at you and those kinds of things. I said, absolutely. So I got home begrudgingly, like 10 o'clock on a Sunday night, I woke up the next morning and drove straight to Omaha and applied. Uh, didn't know anything about chiropractic really. I had some friends from school that lived in Davenport and they, whenever I went to go visit home with them, they showed me around this, like drove around the streets of the school and that's the first time I'd ever heard of what this was. And uh, as I started to, I got hired um, as the receptionist and as I started working at this job, I liked it a lot. I liked the patient interaction. I liked talking to people. I liked the fact that I would see people come in one way and come out a completely different way. 
And I started getting adjusted. I'd never been adjusted before. Um, I was in my mid-20s. And I didn't have like a miracle moment, um, but I saw miracles happening all the time. Like you can quote and quote miracles, but when a kid comes in with a really bad attitude and walks out like he's a cool cucumber, like I'm on board. So um, that's how I kind of got into the chiropractic realm. I really um, looked up to my mentors and at one point uh, they would go to these meetings on Thursdays and I wanted to be better at my job. And that had never happened before. And, uh, excuse me, and uh, they had these meetings and I said, well, can I go? And they said, oh yeah, absolutely. So they, I went with them. And the first talk I heard was Dr. Jeff Slocum. He's in Missouri, I think. And he was discussing about how he and his wife were in a fight. And he was stuck at this airport and he started writing her a letter. And he started getting more angry and this letter started getting longer and longer. And um, he got another delay, and so he sat down and he read this letter. And he read it, and it, he realized, well, how can I ask anything of anyone else if I'm not willing to do the work? And it immediately applied to life for me. And that was like, okay, the mental, you know, the the philosophy of chiropractic. I'm on. I'm on board. I'm good. And so I started going to these meetings, and I started getting promotions at this job. So I became what was called a creative position called patient advocate. So I would bring patients in, um, like welcome them to the clinic. I didn't like go out and seek for them to come to us. And I would do the exams and um, I would have these consultations with them and all these things and talk to them about their financials. And um, I loved it. I loved everything about it. And the only thing I wasn't doing in the clinic was adjusting. And I was happy not to adjust. Like I knew it, that was illegal. Um, <laughs> but uh, all abiding citizens. Yeah, I tried. So what was that? What was that? I mean, you had a number of sort of pivotal moments along the way, but mm -hmm. what eventually triggered just, wow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pursue this. Well, professionally. At, yeah, at one of these meetings, I was taking notes. You know, I, I'd been in the education system for X amount of years, and so when it's like prison, whenever you leave, you're kind of just like, where do I? What do I do? You wanna, you wanna learn more. And uh, it's, school is not prison. That's not what I said, but, uh, <laughs> but it kind of is. It's an institution for sure. Um, and she looks over to me and she goes, you should be a chiropractor. And I was like, bye. And I'm just like, I want to be better at my job. And um, at these meetings um, that my boss at the time, he would host um, the speaker. And there's this gentleman from um, Colorado, and he's not a chiropractor, and he owns a business called Patient Media. And we're kind of talking, and I think my boss is giving me a little slack about something. And the guy looks over at me and goes, Penny, do you want to be a chiropractor? And I was like, I don't know. And it had never been, I don't know. It had always been like, buzz off, no, like, that's not my thing. And I was like, I don't know. And so I started doing research and kind of having those pivotal moments as a young adult of like, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? And I... Uh, I decided that I was going to set up a meeting to go to Palmer because Palmer was the nearest um, chiropractic college. And I'd had a woman come and speak to me from Life University in Marietta, Georgia. But there's something about origin in Iowa and those things. Like, I am I was made in Iowa. I was born here, you know. And so I was like, oh, I'll go to, I'll go drive across the state and go visit the school just for the, you know, the weekend and the free hotel room. That's not why. But... Um, <laughs> So I went, and the moment that I arrived, I knew that the question that I would be asking at every corner of this school was, what can they do for me? What am I going to get out of this? Is this worth it? And so we're going along the halls, and I'm a quote person, and all along the walls they have all these quotes, you know, if, um, if you know, oh gosh, what, what's one of them? I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, it takes like 33 muscles to frown and only two to smile. And, um, you know, if you always tell the truth, you never have to worry about lying. Um, and all these things from uh, B.J. Palmer, which was the developer of chiropractic, very geeky stuff that I really liked. And they had this folklore and these stories, and it was intriguing. And we get to this, the end of the uh, tour and this business area that they have created. That was one of the things that a lot of alums had discussed about what they needed from Palmer, what they think that would set other chiropractors up for the future. And while we're sitting there, this gentleman comes in and he starts talking about the programs and mentorships and all these things that um, 
Palmer offered. And this gentleman um, raised his hand and he's like, he was with his fiance and her brother and her father and mother, like the whole group of them. And he raises his hand and he's like, how's she gonna make money? And I was sitting there like, I have been working with chiropractors for over a year and it's not about that. It's, oh my gosh, like these people are not worried about that. And the gentleman up front was, well, we have these mentorships, we have these opportunities, well, you know, and he's just say super chill. And I very much idolized that. And uh, he's like, uh-huh, how's she gonna make money? And my feet started to get hot and this heat just started to raise up in me. And I just recently heard this quote by Superman, Christopher Reeves, that if you find that there's a role that no one else can play, you have to get that role. And so this is all now, but this was then where I was like, I need to do this. I need to be this person. I need to go do this. I need to let them know that it's not about the money. It's about people and caring and taking care and giving alternative options for people that don't think that they have any. Um, you know, preventative measures aren't always advertised out there for taking care of yourself. That can be looked down upon in some cultures or some households and those things. And, you know, if you take care of yourself too much, you're, you're self-indulgent and X, Y, Z. And I'm glad that our culture is coming around. Like, I don't know how many times in the past week I've saw the two words self-care. And I think that that's, that's important. True. There has been a sh little bit of a shift. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I think that was definitely the biggest thing for me. I was like, okay, I got to get my, my world together, my life together, and I need to go. I need to go figure out how I'm going to do this. And you did it. How long is the program? <laughs> how long is the program at Palmer? Palmer's program um, is three and a third years, and it's pretty much a five-year medical school shoved into three and a third years. So um, I was supposed to go in November of 2012. I ended up going in July because I got a scholarship, and I didn't have a car, and I was living here in Des Moines, taking, um, I had just finished taking more prerequ prerequisites for hard sciences, and I was working four jobs. So not having a car and working four jobs and being like, well, I'm moving in 10 days, so <laughs> bye guys. Um, that was pretty pivotal for me as well. Um, it was definitely important in my, like, it's an hour and ever. Yeah, so. it's a lot to walk away from. So yeah. you have to feel passionate about. Absolutely, I didn't. What you're doing. I didn't have any friends in Davenport where the school is located, um, and that was very important to me. I had no family within two, three hundred miles, and I called my one of my best friends from college, and I said, "Will you ask your parents if I can live with them for a while?" And she's like, <laughs> "Yeah." So she did, and oh, they were, and they welcomed me with open arms, and yeah, it was uh, pretty intense. Whenever I finally like set my foot in Palmer, I was like, "Well, let's go." So at what point during your years there, if at all, did you ever think to yourself that you were going to start your own practice after school versus maybe hooking up with one of your mentors that you had along the way? I think from the get-go, I had thought that I would spend five years not wandering, but searching and looking. Um, I wanted to work with three to five doctors in that time. If, if they weren't in one, one clinic, then maybe two clinics, just to get my feet underneath me and understand of a lot of the business side, because that is what, as I mentioned before, they have a whole business section at Palmer now, and um, like department. And so I wanted to learn from quote unquote the best, or learn you know learn what not to do and learn what to do and, and those sorts of things. Um, so I knew that one day I would open. I remember my, my mentor in Omaha, she's like, you could have guitars on your walls. And I was like, I don't know how to play guitars. And she's <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah. Um, but she had always uh, pushed me that I could have my own practice one day. And so I didn't think I couldn't. And, uh, but it wasn't your original plan. <laughs> Not at all. So how did you go from graduation to maybe feeling out where you might land to having space in the East Village? So it was, so graduated in October in 15, and um, I think it was about, it had to have been like right around July, that I realized that an opportunity that I had talked to another mentor that was going to be no more. And so I went to another mentor, and I was like, uh, I don't know what I'm doing right now. And he's like, what do you mean? And I was like, that's not, an, that's not available anymore. And he's like, start your own. And there's another famous chiropractor, his name's Dr. Rob Sennett, and he posted one time, this woman was complaining about how her son couldn't get any funding or loans to open his practice, and she said, and he wrote back, tell him to get 
a room, a scope, and go. So that's what I did. I literally got a room. Um, I had some associations in the East Village, and I found out that they had a room coming up that was available, and, my, and I could afford the rent. And they had free parking, which was a downtown, which was a big right? seller, uh -huh. not only downtown, but for like any small business and a uh, beautiful building, as you've been there before. Mm -hmm. And I was like, not I'll for her. I still need to get in and actually <laughs> leverage the services she's offered. But, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so would, had you looked at other uh, so many folks that are looking to start a business that they, they feel that it requires space. In your case, mm -hmm. it did. Yeah. You could go a number of different ways. Mm -hmm. You could get a loan out to help fund space. You could, and you did some, you did a little shopping around. I definitely looked around. There was a couple of people that were interested in, like, um, cohabiting a space. I talked to a couple massage therapists that had already had um, established space, and it just didn't really feel right. Um, a lot of juggling. And as a new business owner, I knew that that's something I didn't want to worry about. And the other thing was the word loan, because I just literally like stepped right off the stage from Palmer. I did not want to take out another loan in any way, shape, or form. So um, as we discussed, I pretty much took all of my savings and I started a business. So I, um, I went to the uh, uh, Secretary of State, I handed him my form, I got my little slip, and um, whenever you graduate, you can call. Like I became very good friends with the woman in charge of my licensing. I was like, hello, have you heard anything? And she'd be like, hi, Penny, no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, okay, thanks. And um, she sent me a little note with my thing that was like, congratulations, we're looking forward to having you in our community, which was really sweet too. And you mentioned one of the first orders of business for you was to find a financial institute that you felt you had a bit of a partnership with. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we find a lot of people will come here and just continue to use their financial provider that they might have their personal mm -hmm. account with, things of that nature. Why was that so important to you to connect with the right financial institute? Because you weren't looking for a loan. Mm -mm. You just want it to feel safe yeah. in that environment. Um, uh, I think mostly because I knew that this was, it was a make it or break it. This was my money. I earned this money or I saved this money. And that everything, every penny that was coming in from there on was going to be mine too. And I don't know if people look at their money that way, but I wanted people that I could trust, people that were nice to me, um, people that didn't um, hear my business and look away. Like they didn't, oh, you're another chiropractor. I'm not asking for loans. I'm asking for support. And, you know, I'm asking for your services. And I think that that's, you know, that's what I would want. That goes back to do unto others is that's what I would want if somebody came to me. I wouldn't be like, oh, another headache. No, I want to I wanna help relieve your headache, not give you a bigger headache. Um, and uh, I'd heard such good th things about Two Rivers and, you know, Tulane, Two Rivers, it kind of it went well together. Huh? And I wanted somebody to be able to call on the phone and be able to talk to and be like, this is my situation or whatnot. I wanted to be... A person talking to another person and both of us respecting work and money and those things that come along with business so so you're set up you have your space you mm -hmm. have your scope mm -hmm. and you're ready to go so first nine first 90 days did it go what was your mission what was your vision for those first 90 days and did it go accordingly um a lot of people and I knew this well before I even decided to be a, my own like my own business owner. Um, they think that once they do all this work, they're going to open their doors and the people are just going to flood in. And that is not very common unless there's a super, a lot of hype. You have a great discount or like prizes. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, they, you know, there's something that somebody's really looking forward to. And pretty much the only thing I can think of people flooding doors for a new store is like a restaurant, not really a chiropractor. Um, my first 90 days, I did not know what to expect. I knew that I was going to be working. And I remember after the first few hours of my first day, after seeing a few patients, that I was twiddling my thumbs for a while. And um, I was lucky. I would call places, and I would try to, like, go talk to people. And that's, like, the best and worst thing about business is talking to people because you get to hear people's stories, and you get to see this 3D version of a human. And, 
and really like um, start to understand and be and feel understood. And then there's what are your fees or what do you what kind of technique do you do if you even know and um, some other questions. Oh, don't you just crack backs or oh, can you adjust me here at the bar or here at the grocery <laughs> store? Uh, no. Like you wouldn't ask a hairstylist to cut your hair in the grocery store, or, you know, so no. Um, it was, How was your office set up in terms of, were you by appointment only? So I had open hours. So I was from seven to seven, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and um, by appointment on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And I sat around a lot, a lot, a lot. And um, since I'm a one lady band, I do a lot of my own marketing. I do a lot of my own, um, you know, I do a lot of my own accounting. I do have an accountant, she's excellent. And I was working with a graphic designer. So um, not a lot was happening then. I was trying to figure out my strategy. Okay, that what could I do now in the middle of winter, the cold season, um, that doesn't involve walking around. <laughs> So how did you change? How did you just change your strategy a little bit? I decided to lessen my hours so I had uh, more opportunity to relax, to be honest, because if you can't, if you're always high strung, you're not going to do good work. And I knew that, and I've known that for a long time. Um, but I decided to go with by appointment only um, because I wanted to put that accountability back on my patients. I would get ditched a lot, and that happens a lot in every industry. And I didn't want to put in any fees at that time because I was new and I didn't want to drive patients away um, or prospective people even to come chat me. I did free consultations. I worked with different schools, uh, Lovejoy. Um, I started to talk with different people about different opportunities for me to go help that wasn't in a chiropractic field. Mm -hmm. So that helped a lot to bide my time. And you talked a little bit about being in well, just the health industry in general, and you made a decision to not take insurance. Mm -hmm. So how, what was your thought process behind that as a new business owner and why you decided to not go that route? Absolutely. Um, I decided long ago that I did not want to be a person that took insurance. And um, mostly I had talked to a lot of mentors that were women and they said if you take insurance it will be really rough on you like you will be chasing money and you will you know it will drag you down and that will take away your passion and I said okay that's not what I'm looking forward to I love what I do I'm very passionate about it um, I believe in it I believe in myself so I decided to be like cash only keep my prices reasonable and low I looked at uh, five or six different mentors or uh, other chiropractors in the area and I pretty much went with the average of that um, and people were paying, and they were paying full price. The first year that I was in business, I gave them the option, because legal, legally I can only give them a 20% discount um, from what my fees are. Um, so I offered that to everyone. And everybody paid the same day, and I started to build. And um, I started to, um, I kept my, same, my fees the same, except I changed from if I was adjusting people's extremities or not. Um, at first it was, oh, I'll adjust any of your extremities for $15. And then people would be like, will you check my big toe? And we you check this elbow and this ear? Because, I, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a service and you're getting a bang deal for it. So I was like, okay, well, now I'm going to charge $15 per extremity. And, um, and I will check them by all means, but adjusting is a different process. And um, at that time, does anyone know? Okay. Um, <laughs> And so then I adjusted my fee. Okay, it's gonna, I'm going to raise it to $25, and it's pretty much unlimited. I will check anything, et cetera. So things started kind of changing a little bit. Um, so it was, almost, it was a learn-as-you-go to some extent in oh, terms absolutely. of how am I going to make money and best serve mm -hmm. my clients. Absolutely, without being overwhelmed or overexhausted. Um, I think that any business owner that's interested in long haul, long game, they'll make changes as needed. So I think I might have the stat wrong, but I think you said 93% of your clients are first time. Mm -hmm. How do I even say that? Chiropractic? Patients. Patients. Yeah. Thank you. They've never, <laughs> they've never been to a chiropractor before. Yeah. So how do you, when you think of generating more consistent long-term revenue versus someone coming in, getting checked out and feeling good and being done, mm -hmm. how do you um, sort of secure your clients for more, for, for the, more of a long-term engagement? Well, I discuss with them their care and their needs, and I give them some information about chiropractic. It is 
it absolutely can be a one-stop shop. A lot of people have, you know, they go in one one time and that they are served for moons. And different um, techniques have different kind of rules that apply to them. The technique that I uh, practice, Gon said, so we look at different things. We look at uh, a patient's x-rays, we look at how they're feeling, we listen to their complaints and how like they're moving and, and all those things. And then I also scope them with the nervous scope to check for nervous pressure, um, pressure on the nervous system. and. I think that those kind of tell the story for the patient. It's like, okay, this could definitely be a one-time situation, but what's your big goal? And I ask my patients that, what are your goals? Are your goals just to get out of pain or do you want to feel like the best version of yourself? And, um, and, I, and I give them my professional and ethical and you know, moral recommendation, but it's their money, it's their body. I can't control any of that. I can barely control what I have going on in my room, let alone what they do outside the door. So I, um, I think that that being honest and open, I think those practices will serve any business owner, to be honest. So when you are out um, working on patients, you're out at networking events, things, things of that nature, do you feel that you have to share up front with your potential clients that you don't take insurance and do you feel that that's becoming more acceptable or are you at a stage where um, you might consider taking insurance in the future? Again, it's just a business decision. Absolutely. So whenever I thought in the past I wanted to discuss with patients about how um, insurance is not health care, it's sick care in a lot of realms. Like you go to the doctor when you're sick, you get these benefits when you're sick and not when you're well. And um, I've decided recently that I am going to start taking insurance as of the new year. I think it'll give a lot of people more opportunities, um, as I discussed with my life partner, that you know people pay for their insurance. They want the benefits of it. And many uh, companies cover chiropractic care. And I would like to see more of my community. I would like to help them in that realm, uh, not only financially, but obviously through chiropractic care. Um, I don't think it's um, that problematic. At the beginning of my business, I was very concerned about getting money X amount of days later than the service that I provided that day. As I've become a lot more stable with regards to patient income, like patients coming into the office, like as having well, money in the business account, now. as well as <laughs> as well as having business income, I feel a lot more stable that I can offer those um, services to those people of submitting it for, uh, their insurance for them and those sorts of things. So that's an example maybe of one way that you feel you've been able to augment mm -hmm. your services. Are there anything, is there anything else that you're offering now that maybe you didn't think about from the very beginning? Well, um, like service expansions or? Yeah, um, I offer supplements. Like I talk to the patients about supplements mm -hmm. that might help their care um, with regards to, you know, a hormone disruption or concern or um, I work with a lot of women with reproductive issues, um, their cycle issues and those things, and talking to them about how, um, you know, nutrition, that is an added benefit of coming. We discuss of like what we eat and what we take in and we look at chiropractic as a thoughts, traumas and toxins kind of situation. So we have those discussions. I offer tongue scrapers, you know, for business or um, elastic bands for stretches and mm. those sorts of things. So continuing to build. So what about, you mentioned an accountant earlier. So let's talk about, you are a one woman show. Mm with maybe some support sprinkled here and there? Tons of support, <laughs> tons of support. So what are some of those areas of support that you're getting outside of your four walls? Yeah, um, so I definitely have an excellent accountant, so uh, she helps me very much with information of what is within the law and obviously um, what I can do with the money I do bring in. Um, uh, I've, used, I've worked with uh, several different graphic designers in the past and they give me a different kind of perspective on, I have an art degree, but I don't want to do a lot of that. Uh, I would rather use that for the patients and looking at you know, the biomechanics versus um, figuring out, if the, is this hue the same as my logo? Um, it's, it, th that is somebody else's job to me. Um, some other things that I've looked at in the past, um, I don't take x-rays in my office, so I refer out for my x-rays. Um, that keeps costs low, and um, uh, and I don't have to... partnership there. Absolutely. And I like that in my community. Um, you know, there's a group of us that we get together monthly and discuss, like, things that go on in business and practice. And that is probably the number one reason why I chose Des Moines. I love Des Moines. It's very progressive. It's a wonderful town. Um, 
I want to stay here and grow here. What about, you mentioned an intern. Oh, what yeah. do you, what does your <laughs> intern do for you? We have a lot of folks starting off that think, well, I can't really afford to mm -hmm. hire anyone. And I think we forget about the world of interns and how eager they are to work sometimes even for free. Often if the business owner is super lucky. Um, <laughs> so at Palmer, you can get an intern or it's called a preceptorship and the preceptor has to be in business for five years. And I have not been in business for five years. But what happened across my desk one day is a student that was at an, another office that I was getting adjusted at. He was there. I introduced myself and, um, you know, gave him my card, told him if he has any questions or concerns, he can get a hold of me. And ooh, was it four or five months later? I, I, do, I remember the student, but I didn't know him. I get this email and it's like, hi, I'm looking for an internship. Are you available? And I was like, what does this entail? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and that is one of the best questions you can ask is, what can I expect from this? Or what, what, do, what, can I, what does this entail? Um, I was looking at, I was going through um, getting my annual malpractice insurance. I wanted to make sure if it was covered or what I had to be responsible for. And uh, I ended up contacting Grandview for this and they asked me if I would be a uh, intern or a preceptor for interns in several different fields and not um, limited to but including kinesiology, um, athletic training that's becoming a master's program there as well as um, a few other things that are like PT, physical uh, therapy. And uh, so I met with the student, I asked him what his goals were, I looked through the paperwork and um, I said okay yeah I'll be your preceptor and he has been incredibly helpful. Uh, his name is, what, I address them as Dr. Felipe because he will be a doctor one day and I want him to know that the, you know, today. And uh, he does not do any doctor things besides <laughs> stand there and look very doctorish with his, <laughs> with his clipboard. And he helps me take my notes and saves a lot of time with that. Um, he actually put together a video I had to do for a, a chiropractic group with um, Gonstead uh, for my non-traditional office. And after it was finished, um, he's like, do you want me to take this and edit it? I was like, yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. And I just go about doing my thing. And he sends me the email. He's like, uh, sends me a text. He's like, I just emailed it to you. I was like, I know I posted it. He's like, oh, you didn't want any music? And I was like, oh, no, no, no. Like, let's, I don't like to watch myself. Let's just Roll with th it. Let's throw it up there. This is what it is. So, so after almost three years then, mm -hmm. what would you say you love the most about having your own mm -hmm. business yeah. and the way that you conduct your business? Listening to other people um, that are peers and colleagues and mentors I think the best thing about being my own boss is I get to set my own hours. I am a huge critic of myself already, so I don't need that from anyone else. Um, I get to send my fees, and um, I get to help these patients. I'm in charge of my part of our partnership of getting this person better. And I think that's one of my favorite things is the partnership of Let's talk about you and what we can do and, and here and now and then for the future of getting you better or meeting your goals. What about challenges? What about the flip side? What are some of the biggest challenges that um, you're experiencing, you mm -hmm. know, not just in your practice, but even when you compare to challenges that you might not have had had you joined another chiropractic firm? Mm -hmm. So I have to be aware of every single fee that comes in and goes out of the office. Um, so when I worked for a chiropractor, I didn't have to worry about his overhead. I didn't have to worry about his dirty toilets. Um, I didn't have to worry about um, making sure the lights stayed on or any of those things. And um, being a business owner, um, you know, I think it's hard to sometimes manage those things of, oh, that insurance went up $400 this year from last year? Good to know. So um, those things. and. Um, I think with patients, like, as I mentioned before, it is their money and it is their life, but a lot of people today are starting to manage their own care. And I think that I would like to be in support of that, but understanding of explaining to patients or everybody being a receptive audience of, this is what we have here. If we can't afford it, we need to make some kind of arrangement so that way we can get you to meet your goals. Um, and sometimes people aren't as receptive as you know you would like them to be or uh, they want to use their insurance as of up to now. Like, well, why don't you, why don't you, why aren't you offering insurance? 
well, you know, I, I can't right now, um, but maybe one day. And so that has been a consensus. And that's another reason why we're, I've decided to do those things. When you look five years out or even three years out, mm -hmm. how do you see your business operating compared to how it is today? Well, um, my goal is to be a lot busier. I think that's a lot of people's goal, but I still want to deliver high quality care. I want people to know that they can get a hold of me and talk to me. Um, business in three to five years. Um, if I was to sit here and be a dream girl, I would say that I would own my own like building and maybe even some land that it was on and I would have a clinic functioning with a kitchenette when you walk in and also a lactation room some very happy staff that love their job and love what they do just like I did and you know have my own x-ray machine and um, it would be digital and um, you know have this space that these people can come and they can know that this is a healing environment and I think I've conquered a lot of those things with regards to how they feel but the place isn't you know what a girl could dream of it as of as yet I suppose. Well, they're, they're, that's a good way to say it. So a dream, but is it something that you really do feel you'll work towards over the years? I think that that's one of my number one goals, is not only to help patients get the results, but also to expand and build. What about any words? Let me do a time check, make sure we have time for questions. What about any words of wisdom based on your experience the last three years that you would share with others looking to start, start um, their own business? At least look into it. At least see what your options are. Invest a little bit in yourself um, to take classes. I I've taken many classes here, and I have never had a problem with any of them. I love all of them. I'm always learning from these lovely women. Um, if you are early into business or thinking about business, you will never have everything done, so don't stress. Um, you um, be patient. It will all come together, and, um, you know, figure out what your goals are and try to grow through it. And um, it's not gonna be easy, but it will be worth it one day. You, it will not be easier, but you will get better. So those are my words of wisdom in three short years of business. <laughs> when we talk, and maybe just in closing, since you sort of are in the self-care world, what do, you, what do you do to sort of keep your sanity through all of this? What are some things that help you as a business owner? Well, I'll be honest, I wish I exercised more, so let's just get that out of the way. Um, I do think that I, I feed myself well. I think I put good nutrients in my system and those sorts of things. Um, I take quality supplements. I also get adjusted every single week. Um, I have a woman that I go to in Indianola for acupuncture uh, about once a month. Um, I definitely and proactive about if I think something's becoming an injury, I start addressing it immediately because I want to be better faster so I can help more people effectively and efficiently. Uh, what else do I do? Um, this, this is great. A lot of times we just have people say, I get like my I nails wine. <laughs> you know, like I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I definitely, um, I, I definitely like in, encourage people to get out of town a little bit. I love this town, but it's even better whenever you come back and you're like, I'm home. You appreciate a little bit more. So um, treat yourself in those realms of um, getting out and seeing a little bit of the world and that too. I think that that will help a lot of people um, settle in and be a little bit more caring of themselves. So. Well, congratulations. Thanks on so much. Your success in your upcoming three year anniversary and thank you so much it's wonderful does anybody have questions for dr penny hi as a business owner and what are you doing now to prepare for like your retirement and mm -hmm. and, and that kind of stuff since if you work for somebody else it would kind of be laid out already uh, got into uh, some business um with Northwestern Mutual and it didn't work out. And I ended up calling back and asking for a woman advisor. And so I got her and she's great. And I give you her name whenever you're finished, but I definitely look forward to, like I invest um, in myself and those sorts of things okay. for, for that. Mm -hmm. okay. What community things do you get involved with? You're so passionate about what you do, so I'm sure you out in the community or at least in the East Village promoting that? I'm, I'm not as much in the East Village. Um, I'm actually working with, um, so Lovejoy Elementary is a school that I've worked with in the past. Um, and 
I think like 75% of the children there are refugee children. So they are, you know, the, this is a whole new world for them and their families. Um, and um, so I help with helping fill up their pantry and those kinds of things. Um, I work with the Young Women's Resource Center. I'm on one of their advocacy committees. I'm on a strategic advisory committee here. Um, it's a lot of volunteer, absolutely. volunteer work. Mm -hmm. um, I'm passionate about helping you know, the youth and women and women in business. I think that's about it that I can think of at the top of my head. Hopefully. Oh, why the name Julie? <laughs> We're all wondering. <laughs> and it's so funny when I had to do my uh, chiropractic video as well. Uh, uh, another lady asked, and, and she's like, "Oh, is it a chiropractic thing because of the, the information highway from the brain to the rest of the body?" I was like, "No. <laughs> We're all on this road towards or away from health, and uh, at any point you can I'm turn just around." Say hell. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Two or from <laughs> Absolutely. Hell. Yeah. Hell or health. Yeah. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, we're always, there's always an opportunity. And my tagline is um, on your road towards health and wellness, we meet you where you are. So, nobody has to think that they have mm -hmm. to be like Olympic status to deserve to have chiropractic care or on the end of the spectrum where they don't understand nutrition and they think things like bug juice is real juice when it's not bugs or juice, it's straight sugar <laughs> and what that does to your system. So, um, that's the, my, my, um, it sort of stemmed from. Yeah, that's where my, uh, mentality of it comes from. So. I like it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? TJ. In the past three years, um, what would you say would be the biggest challenge or, you know, the biggest lesson that you learned and you wish you could just tell every small business owner, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, other than you can't get it all done. <laughs> in a day, especially. Um, I think the networking is a big thing. Um, it's some of the times the best and worst things. Uh, I've gone to groups where I have introduced myself. Hi, I'm Dr. Penny. I'm a chiropractor. We have a chiropractor. Okay. <laughs> 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 and then I walked in and talked to some lovely women, and we just had a great time, you know, and got to know each other and made each other laugh. And I think finding friendship in, in this crazy world in itself, let alone a business ownership, is pretty priceless in itself. Okay. Anything else? Go ahead. Um, what's maybe one way that you kind of build your clientele, like, you know, from going from twiddling their thumbs to, like, getting more people in your door? Um, I was a little bit more confident with saying things like, I think I can help you with that. And definitely using the words, I think I can help you with that. I'm, not, I'm going to help you with that because I'm not going to guarantee it. Um, um, being a little bit more confident in that, like, I have to fill my seat. Um, relative to somebody who maybe is a, a hairstylist, if, if somebody's not in your seat, you're not really making money. And um, so I kind of take that mentality of it. It's not always about the money. That's why I got into this, is to let people know about more information, but I can't sustain a business if I don't do those things. So um, being aware of who, who to talk to and how to talk to people and also being engaged in your community um, I try to be the change I want to see. I'm not Gandhi, but I know his quotes. Um, but things like that of, um, you know, just being present and... Um, and confident. I like how you said... Yeah, absolutely. Said that. Mm -hmm. I have to ask for it, you know, and I'm not too proud to live and ask to do something I love to do and, and those sorts of things. And I've had, I was very lucky at some points when people would just call and be like, are you a chiropractor open on Saturday? I am. <laughs> so. Come see me now. Give me five minutes to get there. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. So. Well, thank you, everybody. We hope to see you again for some of these first Friday sessions. It's just lovely to hear other stories from other women business owners. And um, feel free to stick around for a couple minutes network there's forms those client intake forms on your chair would be wonderful if you could just take a minute to fill those out those help us keep our funding coming so that we can continue to offer programming such as this so really appreciate your time we have business cards out front did you bring some business cards i have them here okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um grab any business cards from each other from the center from dr penny and hopefully we'll continue to see you all
in the future. So thank you. My, thank you.